Mansion Mirage offers an abundant amount of sunshine and beauty, a charming and exquisite quality of life to enjoy with clear skies and breathtaking sunsets. It's easy to see why so many people call Rancho Mirage their dream destination. No matter where you live on this planet, Mother Nature is having you prepare for one of her challenges. California is no exception. Here is where we prepare for earthquakes. Hi, I'm Kay Ballard and I live in Rancho Mirage, but most of you have seen me in every restaurant around the valley. I am happy to be here. You know that I was so lucky to find Rancho Mirage as my permanent home. We are so privileged today to have a man who goes all over the world to help people how to prepare for disasters. And he's an expert, Dr. Dennis Maletti, and he lives here in Rancho Mirage, Dr. Dennis Maletti. Scientists have just completed a series of studies that give us brand new information about the earthquake we face in Southern California. And that information is gonna be shared with you here the city is going to make recommendations to you about how you get ready for that earthquake based on the new information. November 2008, U.S. Geological Survey scientists state the most likely large earthquake in California will affect Southern California, the Coachella Valley, and Rancho Mirage. Rancho Mirage may shake for up to two minutes. People in the Coachella Valley and Rancho Mirage should be prepared for the shaking and be ready to be on their own for seven to 10 days. There's one thing to remember. What we need to do is get ready for that earthquake, not the ones we've experienced. And we're lucky to have all that new scientific information. Step one, secure your stuff. Reducing or eliminating hazards throughout your home, workplace, Conduct a hazard hunt to help identify and fix things such as unsecured televisions, computers, bookcases, furniture, and unstrapped water heaters. They can be secured with flexible nylon straps and buckles for easy removal and relocation. Securing these items now will help to protect you tomorrow. In the kitchen, unsecured cabinet doors fly open during earthquakes allowing glassware and dishes to crash to the floor. Hook and eye latches are great and very convenient and not so expensive. Gas appliances should have flexible hoses so they don't tear out of the wall when shaking occurs. That will reduce the risk of fire. Secure refrigerators to the walls to reduce the chance of the refrigerator bouncing around and possibly hitting someone during the shaking. Objects on open shelves and tabletops and display stands, collectibles, pottery objects, and lamps can become deadly projectiles. Use Velcro or earthquake gel to secure breakables and move heavy items to lower shelves. Hanging objects, mirrors, framed pictures, and other objects should be hung from earthquake hooks so they can't bounce off the walls. Pictures and mirrors can also be secured at their corners with earthquake putty. Only soft art, such as tapestries, should be placed over beds and sofas. Large furniture, like pianos and beds, can be secured to your wall invisibly by using heavy fishing line, so your home can still stay attractive but secure. We've brought together a few of the state, if not the nation's, leading experts uh, to talk to the people in Rancho Mirage. Dr. Lucy Jones is the director of the U.S. Geological Survey Center here in Southern California. You have to consider earthquakes as part of your future. That does not mean you have to leave. Earthquakes can be lived through, but you need to be ready for them. You need to secure your own space. Look at the house you own and make it as secure as you can. You can probably do something to both make the structure stronger and secure the contents. Go into your living room and look around the room. Think of that strong shaking and think about what's falling on the floor. Can you afford to lose it? Can you afford to have it hit your head? 
and can you keep it from falling? All of those probably have a pretty concrete answer. It's not rocket science, it's really plain common sense. If you want to live here, learn to live with your face. Step two, make and practice preparedness plans. Planning for an earthquake or other emergencies is not much different from planning a party or a vacation. Get together with your family or housemates to plan now what each person will do before, during, and after. By planning now, you will be ready. Make sure that your plans include who will be in charge and the director of your plan. Practice middle-of-the-night plans that should include making sure everyone stays in bed with their heads covered with pillows. Keep a flashlight and sturdy shoes in the dresser next to the bed, not under your bed as they will be shaken away. Sleep with blinds, drapes, or shades drawn to minimize flying shattered glass. You know, it was Dwight Eisenhower when he was president who once said, emergency plans are useless but emergency planning is essential because it familiarizes the people who develop the plan with what they're going to face in a very unfamiliar circumstance. Step three, put supplies in kits, backpacks, and containers. We've got Mark Benthian, who's the Director of Public Education and Outreach for the Southern California Earthquake Center at the University of Southern California. Being in Rancho Mirage, being in the desert where it can be very hot in the summer, of course, you need more water than we may recommend in other parts of California. So it's really good to have at least 18 gallons per person to uh, both be for drinking water as well as for sanitation, for keeping yourself cool if it's hot, and to have that at home and have you know, in, in many formats and you can have stored water. Living in Rancho Mirage, you will need more supplies than just kits. You would need extra supplies so you can make sure you have backpacks and storage containers. Make sure your supplies are in accessible locations at home, at work, or in your vehicle, or where you spend most of your day. Preparedness supplies should also be maintained outside in case your building is badly damaged. Backpacks or other small bags are best for your supplies, so you can take them with you if you have to evacuate. Having emergency supplies readily available, you can reduce the impact of an earthquake or other emergencies. A lot of experts have given a lot of thought to what should be in those kits. Get the list they've developed. But a more fun way to approach it, and a much more personal way to approach it, is what I did. I imagined that I was going camping in the middle of the Mojave Desert all alone for 10 days. And I thought, if I were going camping in the middle of the desert, in the middle of summer, what would I want with me? Would I want something to give me shade to be in? Would I want food to eat? Would I want things to drink, etc.? And that's what I put together for my earthquake emergency supplies. Step four, secure your building and finances. Some houses are not safe as they could be. Whether you are a homeowner, renter, or a business owner, there are things that you can do to improve the structural integrity of your home. Some of the things you might consider are checking foundations that need to be bolted down. Consult a contractor or an engineer to help you identify your building's weaknesses and begin to fix them. How much earthquake insurance should you have? Can you afford to replace your household possessions? How much would they cost? Let me put it this way. Uh, you live in California. And if you took three quarters of your financial assets, converted them to cold cash, would you go put them in a bank that's not insured by the FDIC so that if the bank goes broke, you get your money back? You wouldn't, would you? Well, having three quarters of your assets in your home, if you live in California in this valley, and an earthquake could happen that could 
take away part of that financial asset from you. It's just as silly as putting money in a bank not insured by the FDIC, in my opinion. Step five, drop, cover, and hold on. Drop, cover, and hold on. Drop to the floor, take cover under a sturdy desk or table, and hold on to it firmly. Be prepared to move with it until it stops shaking. If you are in bed, hold on and stay there, protecting your head with a pillow. You are less likely to be injured staying where you are. In a high rise, drop cover and hold on. Avoid windows and other hazards. Do not use elevators. Outdoors, move to a clear area if you can safely do so. Avoid power lines, trees, and other potential hazards. Driving. Pull over to the side of the road and stop. Avoid overpasses, bridges, and other potential hazards. Theater. Stay in your seat and protect your head and neck with your arms. At the top of the list, I would say practice dropping to the ground covering your head and body under a heavy table and desk and holding on to the leg of that table or desk so that as the earthquake has it try to move across the room, you move with it and you keep that protective shelter above you. And don't just think it sounds like something you can do. I actually did it for the first time about a year ago and uh, I needed to practice quite a bit uh, to be able to, well, even just get down on the ground. Step six, check for injuries and damages. Now today I'm here to talk to you about damages and injuries that occur as a result of earthquakes. One of the things that we learned from the Loma Prieta earthquake is that people that had CPR and CERT training were better equipped to deal with the circumstances and fared a lot better as a result of what arose from the earthquake. You should all be aware that damages occurred during an earthquake, some more critical than others. Fire, for instance. I would recommend that everybody go out and have at least one, maybe two fire extinguishers at home. That puts you in a position to be able to put out small fires and keep them from spreading and becoming a major issue. Another damage you might incur is a gas leak. You should know how to be able to turn off your gas valve. If you smell gas or if you hear hissing of gas, whether it's coming from inside the house or by the gas meter, that's a sign to turn it off. Don't try to turn it back on. Contact the gas company and let the professionals do it. It's a possibility there may be down power lines. Approach all power lines as though they're still energized. Stay away from power lines. Don't touch them. Don't touch any objects that may be touching them. Chemical spills. Use extreme caution with them. You have to clean them up, and you should. But if you're dealing with items such as bleach, petroleum products, lye, what you want to use there is dirt, to absorb the chemical. You can also use cat litter. Keep your hands from coming in contact with these types of chemicals as they can be harmful and dangerous to you. Step seven, communicate and recover. We created the seven steps to earthquake safety to make it easier for people to know how to prepare, protect, and recover for major earthquakes. And it's the seventh step, which really brings it all home, all that you've done in the first six steps has prepared you to more quickly and where less costs recover from the earthquakes that, go, that are going to happen. And it's the seventh step where you're going to not have the headaches that many people might have because of what you've done to prepare yourself before and during the earthquake. Turn on your portable or car radio for information and safety advisories. Check on the conditions of your neighbors. Until you're sure there are no gas leaks, do not use open flames. Never use the following indoors, camp stoves, gas lanterns or heaters, gas or charcoal grills or gas generators. These can release deadly carbon monoxide or be a fire hazard and aftershocks. If the power is off, plan meals to use up refrigerated and frozen foods first. If you keep the door closed, food in your freezer may be good for a couple of days. If your water is off or has no pressure, or you think it's unsafe, you can drink water from heaters, melted ice cubes, or canned vegetables. 
Avoid drinking water from swimming pools or spas. Don't eat or drink anything from open containers that's near shattered glass. I want to thank all of you for listening to what we had to share with you today. Uh, I enjoy living in Rancher Mirage and I've enjoyed helping share with you uh, the information we have about the earthquake we face and how to get ready for it and introducing you to some of the people that have done the research and have the expertise that we've shared with you. Thanks for your attention and uh, thanks for thinking Rancher Mirage is as beautiful a place as I do. Kay, what am I supposed to do again? What you do is drop, cover, and hold on. Wait a minute. Let me make this a little easier. Oh, okay. Hit it, boys! <laughs>